Hello, hello, and welcome to Joyful Eating episode 123. So today we're going to be talking about feeling good in your clothes, which is one of my favorite things. Uh, and we I have a special guest for you, actually a super special guest. So um, with Courtney Carver. So before, before we get to that, the best bite I had recently on the weekend, my broccoli has been growing like crazy. It's winter here. And so I think broccoli tastes better in the winter. Like it's just a little bit sweeter, a little bit nicer. So I made some of my beautiful broccoli, which is basically broccoli that I just roughly chop it and steam it in for like in salted water. Anyway, had the beautiful broccoli with poached eggs, which I eat all the time. But the really magic thing that I did was I made a caper and raisin mayonnaise. So just mayonnaise mixed with chopped up um, capers, salted capers that I just brushed all the salt off and some finely chopped raisins. And then also my secret ingredient, um, some finely chopped anchovy as well. And it was just like, like that combo of like sweet and umami with the broccoli, like the business. <laughs> anyway, so um, the story behind this episode, like why I, I, I've been friends with Courtney for a long time and why I decided to ask her to come on to the podcast is one of my clients in the Naturally Healthy Club, actually a couple of them have been doing some work around changing their relationship with their wardrobe because uh, you know, as they're losing weight, they're just noticing that their body's changing and they ne not necessarily like that the the relationship with their wardrobe wasn't really changing and wasn't keeping up. So we've been having discussions around, you know, feeling good in your clothes and, and actually changing your wardrobe to reflect that. And so I was just like, yeah, I need to get Courtney on to talk about this idea of feeling good in your clothes. And you actually don't need to lose any weight to feel good in your clothes. Like you can actually start feeling good in your clothes. And Courtney has a really beautiful, simple way to approach this because she's a minimalist like me. Um, so without any further ado, let's jump into the conversation I have with Courtney. Hey, so welcome. Today I have a very special guest for you. So I don't normally have guests on the Joyful Eating podcast, but I really wanted to share and introduce you all to my brilliant friend, Courtney Carver. So she's actually my, I think like my oldest blogging friend, like I met her, Courtney and I met, I think it was 2009, Courtney, would that be right? When we did the- Maybe list. 2010. It might've been 2010, right? We yes. did a, a course together with Leo Babata from Zen Habits called A-List Blogging Bootcamp. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Wow. It feels like yesterday that we started doing this, but then when you say 2009 or 10, I think, oh my gosh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> exactly. I know. I know. Yeah. It's so crazy. Yes. Anyway, so the uh, reason I wanted to get Courtney on because but um, to talk on joyful eating is because one of the things that I like I'm really passionate about is helping people feel good in their clothes and doing that for me mostly through changing how they eat. But there's also a really amazing way to feel good in your clothes, which is what Courtney specializes in. So, but before we get to that, maybe if we just take a step back, Courtney, and just want to share like your simplicity journey and how you came to be interested in minimalism and the whole simplicity. Thing? Sure. Well, when we met in 2010, I had just started my blog, Be More With Less. And the person that I was then was really different, or I should say the life I was living was really different than it had been even five years before that, because I used to work in advertising for luxury magazines really wild deadlines. My boss was always remind reminding us that people thrive under stress. And if we didn't believe him, he would like remind, show us how <laughs> very, very stressful environment. I was deep in debt. Uh, all, just, I felt like I was always overextended when it came to all resources, money, time, space, energy, all of it. And I also thought that that was just how you're supposed to adult because everybody was adulting just like that around me. And fast forward to 2010, I had gone through a big wake up call being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2006. And through all of my research, I discovered, and none of this is science backed or doctor approved. It's just what I learned mostly on the internet is that stress is really damaging for people with 
MS, autoimmune diseases, and fast now, I think for everyone, um, depending on how, how you're taking it in and how you're letting it out. Um, but I was on this mission to reduce as much stress from my life as possible to prevent further disease progression. And that turned into simplifying my life because all of the things I was doing to reduce stress, they were all rooted in simplicity. And so that really started my new lifestyle, my new career, everything. I was just all about simplifying my life. Right. And it was all this health that was driven by your motivation. Correct. For your health. Yeah. Yeah. Because certainly there were other reasons in my history that I would have wanted to simplify, but I never had took the time to really pay attention to them. I needed that like really big shake up and yeah, that's what it took. So I never thought I would be grateful for a potentially chronic and progressive disease, but wow, it really changed everything for the best for me. Amazing. And so like, did you just go like, was that just something you started to piece together for yourself, Courtney? Like, was that? It was, uh, because the first doctor I was working with was just really not about anything in terms of lifestyle to impact the disease. Like for instance, I would ask her like, how does diet and exercise play into this? Like how many of your patients are doing better? What are they doing? I really wanted to know how people who are living well with MS, what is their secret? And I remember her telling me uh, it's, diet and exercise don't matter. Lifestyle, it doesn't matter. And it's not a matter of how well you're going to do. It's how slowly or quickly you'll decline. All right. (laughs) And that was, yeah. And when you're hearing that as a, a sick, scared, really exhausted person, it just like really deflates all of your hope. And And I knew that I couldn't work with her anymore. Like that was a deal breaker for me. And so I switched doctors and thankfully found someone who I continue to work with today, um, who understands that I am my own advocate, that we make decisions together. And that in fact, lifestyle makes a big difference when it comes to how you feel. So thankfully I'm on a much better path now, but that first year was really challenging. And so it was even once I started working with someone who supported me experimenting with um, diet changes, lifestyle changes, movement changes, I, I was also really on my own with like, what is going to help and all I could think of is like, what is the most stressful thing in my life right now? And how can I reduce the stress around that? And then I would move to the next thing and the next thing. Right. So you just took a like step-by-step approach. Yeah. Yes. I had to, because I, it's not like I hadn't tried to change my life before and change habits and, and do things, but I always did it in this way that was really aggressive and like, go big or go home. And like, let's get this done in 21 days or less. (laughs) (laughs) And then I'd always end up making the same change over and over again, because inevitably it would lead to burnout or disinterest, because it was just impossible for me to achieve the kind of goals I wanted to achieve in the way that I was approaching them. So before I decided to do any changes, I really figured out how to change the way I change. And that made all of the difference. Yeah. So do you want to tell us talk a bit? So, so you stopped doing the all or nothing, like big, go big. So what was, what did you replace it, your change approach with? Slow and steady, <laughs> tiny steps, being really gentle with myself because it seems like, and it still seems when I'm talking to people that it's so deeply ingrained in us to, to take those messages that we've heard, like go big or go home, or you better buckle down or get disciplined. Um, that we use those in response to when we're not feeling well. So we're feeling stressed out or overwhelmed. And then we think it's our fault that we feel that way. And so the solution is to go harder. And then we end up feeling worse or we're in this like just cycle, at least I was. And I know I've heard from a zillion people, it feels like. It definitely not the same way. Yeah, exactly. 
So I decided to stop blaming myself, to stop berating myself when I wasn't feeling well, realizing that it only made me feel worse and to see what it would be like to be gentler and softer and to take it in a way, way, way slower way, not to do everything all at once, but to try one thing at a time, which as I'm saying it right now, it sounds so sensible, but it wasn't obvious to me at all. Yeah, of course. Uh, Yeah. And now it is now that that's kind of the way of the world for me. Um, But it took years of like day by day, slow and steady, consistency over intensity, just being present as much as possible in making these changes. And now today, with all of the changes I've made from, you know, decluttering and downsizing to paying off debt, all of those things took years. And still today, when I see something that needs a little tweak or that might be not serving me in, in the right way, or especially if it's removing me from being present, I always think like, if this is removing me from my life, I will now remove it. <laughs> like, how can I do that? All right, That's a sign to you to. Yeah, for sure. But because I simplified, I have the space to pay attention to those things. Otherwise there would have been no way because yeah. life just gets all consuming. Yeah, of course. Of course. So yeah, cool. So so with the wardrobe stuff and actually, so Courtney has an amazing book called Project 333 where, um, so that was like specifically on simplifying your closet. So how did you come, like, how did you come to write that book, Courtney? Like what was this, what led you to that? Okay. Let's go back to 2010. <laughs> back into it. Yes. We're doing the English just, blogging boot camps. <laughs> yep. I've just started my blog. I'm still working ridiculous hours at my day job, but I'm having fun now sharing my simplicity journey online and meeting people like you and Leo and other wonderful people in that um, blogging group. And as I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not to the place where I think I've figured things out. I'm still working through it, which I think was a great way to start actually, not to have waited until I figured it all out because when do we really have it all figured out? out? Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) And I had done a lot of decluttering in my house, but interestingly, I never decluttered my closet or changed my shopping habits because I thought, ready for this bombshell, I thought that uh, shopping reduced stress for me. It was like an outlet. Oh, Now, I have never (laughs) proclaimed to be good at math, but (laughs) I didn't put together that shopping was like contributing to my debt and that this stuffed closet was really leading to discontent in my life. Instead, I just kept adding and adding and adding and I would buy things for every new event that I had, um, for every new emotion that I had. (laughs) I... I knew the answer. Like the way to solve this problem is a new pair of shoes. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So when it came time, because of course, once you start decluttering, <laughs> I've, simplified, I've simplified everything else, but this is closet here. <laughs> right. And I knew at that point that this kind of slow and steady approach that I had was probably not going to work in this instant. And I started searching for a challenge of some sort. And I really couldn't find anything. And so I decided to make one to create a challenge where I could sample simplicity in my closet without the stress of getting rid of everything or feeling like I was, I didn't have enough. I just wanted something so I could try it out. And so I created this challenge that is now known as project 333 and and wrote the rules of the challenge where I would dress with 33 items or less for three months. And that would include clothing, jewelry, accessories, and shoes. And it wouldn't include things like sleepwear, underwear, or workout clothes. The only uh, condition there was that my workout clothes had to be working out. So they couldn't be like, I'm just going to throw my yoga pants on and go to the grocery store. That's all I'm wearing for the rest of the (laughs) season. Well, now, I mean, then 
like athleisure, athleisure, is that how you say it? Athleisure yeah, wear yeah, or leisure yeah. wear wasn't as prevalent. Um, so it really was separate. And now, of course, a lot of my 33 items include things like leggings or yoga pants, but they're part of my everyday wear. So I count them in the 33 items. Uh, but anyway, so I, that summer of 2010, I kind of thought it up. And then in October of 2010, I announced it on the site of my new blog. Uh, and people really gravitated towards it. They liked the idea or they hated the idea, <laughs> um, but they wanted to talk about it either which way. And so either they thought it was great or that I was really weird or something, but it was fun because there was energy around it. I had some accountability and I thought it would be a three month thing and then we would move on. But because it was so successful, not only in my life, but in my business, it's something that I continued with. And then in 2018, I think I started writing the book. My publisher asked me if I would write a book about it specifically. And then it came out in March of 2020, um, which not the best time to <laughs> put anything Publish out in the world, book. by the yeah. way. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's how it came about. And today still, I do Project 333. It's been now 13 years. And it's every three months. Actually, I, I push it out now to probably five or six months because it's become um I like, I don't even need to change out every three months, but the rules of the challenge are still three months, 33 items. And then in between, you can decide if you're going to donate things, add things in, change things up, but do it in a way that instead of donating everything, but your 33 items, just get it out of sight, hide it. Yeah. That's such a good tip, Courtney. Like, and so yeah, like that's something that I've adopted from you is like, like I actually have a box that like I've got this big wardrobe, but I have a box down the bottom where I put like the stuff that I'm not wearing for that season in the box. So then when I look in my closet, it's like, so at the moment it's like winter time now. I just did my winter collection and yeah, like so I've got the winter things out, but like my summer stuff is all packed away. So like that first step alone, like has been so life-changing for me for how I feel when I look open my club my wardrobe because it's just it's not crowded anymore so so good Courtney thank you for that of course it's so interesting I think how we think it's just clothes and so and they're typically behind closed doors but it's the one thing that every day you're you're getting dressed every single day and I had no idea how much stress was in my stuff around around body image, around money, around relationships, so much stress. Like, and until it was gone, I didn't know because I was just used to this like low level feeling of, uh, I kind of feel kind of ick when I'm finished getting ready for the day. Right, right. And so yeah, that must have been such a big change like that first season when you went from like stuffed closet to 33, like that's like... What did you, what did, what was the thing that you like surprised you about that? It was stuffed closets, by the way, closets. like there were more than one closet. <laughs> there was more than one closet. Uh, I think a few things surprised me. So I knew, or I anticipated feeling like I had more room in my closet. Of course, I anticipated saving money because I wouldn't be shopping for those three months either. Um, but some things that I didn't see coming were like, number one, feeling more confident in who I was instead of what I wore. Right. So I feel like sometimes I would dress to prove myself in, in, in a particular role. Like if, if it was at work, I would wear shoes to a meeting that I would never wear anywhere else. Um, and, at, you know, as soon as the meeting was over and I could get into my car, I would put flip-flops on because my feet hurt so much or uh, like I would wear a suit in certain situations and I'm not a suit person I and you feel like you're kind of pretending when you're wearing clothes that really don't suit you and I get that we have to dress for certain situations 
of course, but I think I did it to the nth degree. Uh, so this, with this shift, because I was still working um, full time, I just kind of brought my dress down about 10% for my work and like up about 10% for my out of work stuff so that there was more crossover. And that was just really freeing. And then number two was that no one noticed that I was only dressing yeah. with 33 items. So Isn't that wild? It, was, it was fascinating because that was one of my concerns is that someone would ask me about it. And I really didn't want anyone to know what I was doing, especially because I had this blog going that nobody knew about at my work. Um, but I just thought it might come up. I was wearing the same dress to every event, like evening event that we would have. And I worked with the kind of people who would have mentioned it had they noticed. Had they noticed. So it gave me a lot of freedom thinking about all of the other decisions I make in my life that were based on what other people might think about them. Oh, wow. wow. Even if they didn't ever express those thoughts, I thought they were thinking things. And I think we all do that. Like, you know, what are my parents going to think? What are, is this person going to think? Uh, and we kind of tell ourselves stories about, and of course, some people do express what they think, but not everybody, a lot of it goes on right inside of our own heads and bodies. Well, yeah. So, so that was really, it. Yeah. it was just great. It was so nice to see that it didn't matter. It really didn't matter. Wow. That must have like the, such a, the, such a big surprise, Courtney, to feel that. Like, cause actually I've all these years I've been like worrying about what people think and what, and it just, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. Because they're worried about what they're doing. They're thinking they're about like, what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really interesting. And then to hear from other people who tried Project 333, especially over that first year, who were saying things like, I never thought that doing something like this would lessen my anxiety or my depression or just make such a shift with my mental health that I mean, I really thought it was kind when I started it, it was about clothes and it didn't take me long to realize it had nothing to do with clothes. It's about the people. Yeah. Like a right. self perception. So what did you notice like um, for the people that were doing it, like in terms of body image, did anyone comment about like that aspect? Yeah, definitely. So there are a handful of like objections to doing project 333. Um, things like the weather, like, I don't know if I can do this with the weather. Bear, that, when I say common, I mean, I hear it all the time. And so I know it's real, I get it. But I also know that there, I'm hearing that more from people who haven't tried it than who have tried it. Uh, and I even did a survey once to say of these fears or concerns, which ones are, are things that you're worried about happening in the future and what has happened already. And I think it was like 90% had never tried the challenge. So it's just like you project your, your fears on what might happen and then you never do it to see for yourself. So weather is definitely one. And then the other big one was um, weight fluctuation. So a lot of people expressed that they were used to having multiple sizes in their closet. So if they gained weight, they had clothes. If they lost weight, they had clothes. And they always had like two to three sizes of clothing. And I could relate to this. I mean, I, I went for decades of my life uh, trying every possible diet to shift my weight by 10 pounds or 12 pounds or 20 pounds. And I sure did shift it. And then it would shift right back. <laughs> yeah. It was the, the, the glorious diet culture of the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. I mean, I think a lot of it still lingers for me now even, but one thing, and so I had in my life more than one size of clothing. And for those three months, while that wasn't a big concern for me, I just thought, I wonder if this is going to be okay. And for starters, three months is a really short period of time. Mm -hmm. So your clothes, you know, have 
I think you have a five pound variation in, in most clothes, but in any case, not thinking about it and not thinking about that weight for me eliminated a lot of the stress around it. And fast forward a few years, I ended up just giving up my scale completely because, and I know this is not for everyone, but for me, the way I treated myself, if I got a number that I didn't like for the rest of the day was so damaging that it's better for me to, you know, when I go to the doctor, if there's a problem, I'll hear about it. Hasn't been the case, but I'm not concerned. I want to say, I know there are specific situations where like you're on a medication that makes you gain weight or something like that, a stage of life, whatever it is, I can understand what that fear is. And if you could let it go for a few months in terms of your wardrobe, it feels really nice. Like it's, it makes a a big difference, Mm -hmm. but to keep clothes, at least for me to keep clothes, for instance, which I did this a lot prior to project 333 that didn't fit me saying like, I'll fit into that someday was not a motivator. It was really a demotivator. It was a a shaming. Like you feel so much shame around it. Don't you? It's like, yeah, like, and it's there. Like, and so, yeah, like even just to pack them away, the clothes that don't fit, like, so that they're not, you're not seeing them every day. Like that must exactly a huge impact, doesn't it? Yeah, of course. I mean, when I was talking about the emotion in your closet, I mean, that would be the number one thing for me were clothes that didn't fit me well. Like there I had spent all that money on them. And because I couldn't resist a piece of pie, now I can't fit into them, which we know is a ridiculous story to tell yourself, but I sure would do that from time to time. And so to eliminate that conversation altogether by having clothes that fit not only my body, but my lifestyle, that's all that was in there was such a nice change. So really life affirming, hey, and really like it just giving you that, like you're looking in the closet closet and you're getting a little boost rather than it being a little takedown like of your Right. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. It's a much kinder way to get dressed and it it make gives you again space to really think about those questions. Like was it that piece of pie or was it that I don't need to fit into a pair of jeans that I wore in high school anymore. Like <laughs> maybe <Yeah>. that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also it's like the, the self-acceptance piece of this is where I'm at now. I think that's one of the really beautiful parts of project 333 is like you're dressing for where you are now and like you're Today. totally accepting of yourself right now. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's helped me a lot. And it's something I think I'll probably continue forever. And it's not that I don't still think about like, do I need something new? Like the questions still pop up. Uh, but I can just say, well, let's just wait and see. Yeah. And it always goes away. Like it almost always goes away. I would say 99% of the time. Yeah. Uh, and when I'm now that I'm not in that cycle of like, I. Uh, it's the weekend. So let's go pick up something or let's celebrate this and go shopping or let's uh, soothe this emotion and go shopping. It's just off the table for those three to six months for me. And so in the in-between times, I'm looking at like, do I need something to serve a, is there something missing? Like, do I need to replace something that doesn't fit anymore or that is getting worn worn out? or whatever. And there's no um, guilt or weirdness around it at all, because it's just a a very practical thing. It's not a, it's not an emotional purchase. It's not a nothing. I'm not buying anything because I hope it will make me feel a certain kind of way. And I'm not buying anything aspirationally, like for a life that I don't have but for a life I wish I had, I'm dressing for my current lifestyle and my current body. And that seems to be working. That feels really good. Yeah. So Courtney, are you ever tempted to go, Oh, I might just sneak in a couple of extra things and go like, what's pretty three, three forty. I'm glad you asked. Uh, 
typically for me, no, because even if I don't count and I just put everything together, if I count later on, it's always in that general area of 33 or less. However, Mm -hmm. I don't think 33 is a magic number. And so for some people, the right number might be 50 items for five months or 40 items for three months, whatever it is. I think the 33 for three months is a great starting place and a way, again, to sample simplicity in your closet and figure it out. So if at the end of those three months, or even as you're working through it, if it's causing you more stress, adjust it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So you, don't, you, you have don't to really count each season. I, I mean, I'll at some point I will. Uh, but for the first time since I started the challenge in the fall, I decided to extend it for five months, uh, just the 33. And then after that, and I live in a four season state, although yeah, fall and winter are, you know, it's like starting to cool down and then it's just cold. So, and I knew I didn't have a lot planned so I could kind of foresee what I might need. And after five months, I still wasn't feeling like changing things out. We had a really snowy winter. It was still snowing. And so I just kept going until six months had passed. And then as it started to warm up, I decided to change things up. So again, it's, it's trying it out, experimenting it, and then trusting yourself to know what works best for you and break the rules. If you need to break the rules, like don't suffer through it. It's not about that. (laughs) Yeah. It's like, hang on, Courtney said 33. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you're, if you're halfway through and, Mm -hmm. and you stain something or rip something beyond repair and you need to replace it, replace it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And what about this? Like how often do you do laundry, Courtney? Oh my gosh. I'm so glad you asked. So you know that uh, my daughter Bailey and I have a podcast called Soul and Wit. And people ask me about laundry as much as they ask me about weather and weight. So (laughs) Bailey and I did a whole episode on laundry that is coming out soon. All right. Um, Awesome. (laughs) Yeah. But I don't do laundry any more or less than I did before. The only thing that has changed is that I take better care when I'm washing. And so for instance, I will typically lie and dry my clothes because I want them to last longer. And I know they get beat up in the dryer. I wash everything typically in cold water. Um, So I just am a little bit more mindful about how I'm doing the wash, but I'm not having to wash my clothes every day because I mean, honestly, like I wear things more than one time before I wash it. And I suppose it depends on your lifestyle, but for me, that, works out fine and I can do laundry a couple times a week uh and be fine with it when you hear this episode where Bailey and I are talking you'll know that this is not I'll get the get the notes and a link to it yeah well it's different for everyone I mean she said sometimes she she won't do laundry for two weeks and that might be a reason that you need Uh, a lot of extra clothes uh, well that's one of Um, my reasons for not doing the three three threes I used to only wash every every two weeks so like like I like that idea of dispatching it and so I like had enough underwear had enough of everything but since I've um since I've had children I've pushing it out to two weeks is like a bit I've got two dirty boys <laughs> so now I <laughs> now I now I wash like now I do laundry twice a week so um I don't like, mind I mean it's yeah. not a big chore and when you have fewer clothes to take care of there is it's not like you're doing more laundry you're just, you might, and I'll combine it with my husband's laundry. I'm not afraid of mixing lights and darks. I have not got gone to laundry jail yet. So I think (laughs) everything's going to be okay. A few, Um, 13 years later. (laughs) That'd be pretty weird. I mean, excuse me, Courtney. (laughs) I mean, where did we, where did we learn all these laundry rules? Like from marketers for laundry soap and, and washing machines and things like that. So I think it's okay, again, to play around a little bit, experiment. If you need to wash a towel with your clothes, everything's going to be okay. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. Take calm and relax. Oh, I There's love more, there, there are other things to worry about in life than what goes in our washing machine. Yeah. So good. So um, 
One other question I had, Courtney, um, like, so you mentioned like that shopping was like one of your ways to soothe yourself. And so when you removed that, like, were, were you, did you do anything like, was it any, did you have any conscious, like, okay, I'm not going to be able to shop anymore. Like, did you make a conscious choice or did, did that just not happen naturally about how you would soothe yourself in other ways? No, I thoughtfully knew that that was going to be an issue mm. for me. And I also knew it would be an invitation to figure out better ways of taking care of myself. Amazing. So it was about, you know, how else can I self-soothe? And also maybe I don't need to, like maybe every feeling I have doesn't need to be taken care of. Like maybe this is just going to pass on its own. And Ooh, like feeling the feelings, Courtney, radical. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I don't, maybe I'm not a problem all the time. Maybe I don't have to fix myself all the time. And that, I mean, I'm still a, a big fan of, of taking care of myself. And I know that there are some days that I don't feel great and it might be mentally or physically, and I don't have to do anything about it. And it, I feel better the next day. So it's a, yeah. it's a mix or a, it cool, just depends cool. on so how, kind of, what I think I need. Yeah. Great. Great. But you were just open. you like, you knew that this was going to be something and you were just open and it kind of resolved it. Like you found ways to work through it. Right. Well, I thought it would only be for three months as well. So I was oh, like, true. This is <laughs> yeah, wasn't failure, for the rest like, of your life. <laughs> on January 1st, there's going to be a big shopping spree. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Amazing. Great, Courtney. I love this so much. Like, because there's there's so much to it. Hey, like, yes, it's the clothes, but there is a, a lot more. So, if someone's like curious about like having a better relationship with their closet, like, where do you recommend that they start? Honestly, I think less is the answer. We always think the solution is more. Like, we need something again new because we're bored with our clothes or because we have a big meeting or because we're going to a party and so it's always this more 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 and it's never as far as I can tell made anyone feel any better in the long term you always get bored again or there's always another event so just give yourself permission to experiment with less whether it's 33 items or 50 items, or you want to do two weeks with three outfits, like whatever it is, play around. Some people like to do this with travel, like really experiment when they travel. So only bring half the things that you were planning to bring. Um, but there are a lot of ways to play around with it. And I think the first thing to do, like the, the gentlest thing that you can do is go into your closet right now and just pull out everything that doesn't fit, anything that still has tags hanging on it, and anything that makes you feel bad for whatever reason, if it makes you feel bad, just take it out, put it in a box and hide the box and see how that feels for a month. Yeah. Great. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Like that's a really beautiful, gentle way to start. Um, and in terms of like your work, Courtney, if someone wants to get to follow you and know, know you better, what's the best way to, for them to find out more about in, about Courtney and this beautiful world of simplicity. Go to my website, bemorewithless.com and you'll find everything you're looking for. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Take Courtney's quiz. It's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Jules. Yeah. And I highly recommend like if you are keen to experiment with your wardrobe to read the project 333 book, it's really, yeah, like it's, shares Courtney's story but it also gives you some practical tips so I found that really a good resource to check out as well and it's on audio, audio there's an audiobook version so there really is great. yeah amazing well thanks so much for coming and having a chat Courtney I really appreciate you and I appreciate your work well as well like it's had such a big impact on my life too I feel the same way about you and your work thank you Jules okay awesome that was so great Courtney Okay, so if you'd like to find out more about Courtney's work, make sure you check out the show notes because I've got a link to um, her blog, Be More Than Be More With Less. <laughs> and definitely don't uh, take a quiz and sign up for her email newsletter. I love re receiving Courtney's things. And also I'll put a link to the 
uh, Wit and Soul podcast, which is Courtney, Courtney's podcast that she does with her daughter, Bailey. And I'll link to that episode that she spoke about around laundry. Okay. Have a beautiful week and I will catch you next week.